Our next talk is Mike, by Mark Prilo. Uh, Mark has worked in the mapping industry since 1995 and has Mark. been contributing to OpenStreetMap since a few years following its creation. He's worked for Mapbox, Uber, and most recently Meta to help them with their mapping-related strategies, including collaboration with open data sources like OpenStreetMap. Now he's the executive director of the Overture Map Foundation, and it's the, uh, which is an initiative of the Linux Foundation that was started last year. I'll let him explain what the foundation is for and where it's going. A warm applause for Mark Prigolo. Thanks very much. Um, it's funny, the uh, introduction, um, I, I've worked for all those companies. I also worked for CloudMade. So, so far, all your presenters are alumni of CloudMade. Andy, uh, well done. Um, let's see what we got here. Um, yeah, so, so first of all, uh, thank you to the organizers uh, of this, the people who put it on. Uh, it's a great event, and you know, it, it is, it, this is driven by so much volunteer effort. Really appreciate that, and appreciate the chance to uh, be here and talk. Um, I'm going to talk about Overture, which is, is uh, some of you may have heard of. Um, that was a nice introduction. Just by way of background, I started in GPS in the industry in about 1995 and flipped over to mapping in 2004. I saw OSM for the first time at the WHERE 2.0 conference in uh, 2006, where Steve came and presented it, and and uh, have, have been sort of following it since then for a long time. And now I, I'm keenly aware that I'm sandwiched between Andy and Roland, and so I'm not going to kind of come up here and tell you all the great things I've done for OSM, but I have been around it for a while. And most of the things I've done with uh, OpenStreetMap has been working on in co companies and encouraging the use of open map data and OpenStreetMap in their products. And so I, I don't want to misrepresent myself as a highly active mapper. You can look at me, you can see my map edits there, 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 but not, not anything. But most of my interest in open mapping has been the use of open mapping uh, by these companies and by the, the broader world of developers because I think it's fundamentally important and fundamentally impacting for this industry. And so I wanna come at it uh, from that perspective and, and, uh, and, and give you that perspective. That's how I come at it. Um, right now I'm working at Overture. Uh, what I wanted to do is, is really just kind of hit a couple things. Uh, one is what is Overture? Because I think there's you know, some confusion around it and just kind of give you a perspective from uh, you know, of what it is. Um, and then talk a little bit about uh, how, it, how I believe it can work with um, OpenStreetMap, what it isn't, and I think that is whether it's, it, it isn't, in my view, competitive, and how it could collaborate. And what I really want to do is leave some time for questions, and, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll get to that as well. Um, so I think the way to describe Overture is by... by asking the question, who is Overture for? Who is Overture being built for? And Mike Harrell covered this a little bit, so I'll just, I'll, I'll cover it, uh, you know, very briefly, but Overture is explicitly for uh, software developers who are building map applications. That is our target audience. Those are, that is who we think about when we are building uh, the things we do. And we think about what those developers do and what they need and what they want. And, and so, uh, and, and most of my career has been working in companies that employ or have map developers who are building applications and putting them out in the world. And so when you think about what are map developers and, and what are they, one thing that might be uh, uh, just not really well thought of is they're not necessarily map experts. They don't necessarily know a lot about maps and they don't necessarily know, know or want to know a lot about map data. The reason APIs are, are really important is because APIs shelter the developer from having to know any of that stuff. What they want is they want map functionality, they want things um, that work that they can use and they can implement. And, and so, uh, you know, as you break that down, there are a couple different pieces that are in there. They want the map data to be really good. Um, the quality has to be good, and it also has to allow them to do the things that their apps need to do. And, you know, if you've been in this industry for a while and you think back 10 years to what map applications did, and you think to now what they're doing now, a huge jump in functionality of map applications, and a lot of that is, uh, is driven by the data that underlies it. In, in the last couple of weeks, there have been two announcements, uh, one by Google, one by Apple, and I read those things, 
And I read about the features, and what I think about is what is the data underneath that that is making that happen? And if you think about it in that way, the, the rise in functionality for mapping applications has been tremendous. That's largely driven by the data that's become available to people. And so a map developer, if you're developing a map that you want people to use, you need to be keenly aware of what the industry and what your users expect uh, in map data. So, so high emphasis on quality. The other parts is they want the data to be easy to use. It has to be structured well. It has to be uh, easy to implement and, and easy to put in. And the third thing I'm, I would mention, because I think this is really different from, say, when, you know, when I got into the industry in 20, or 2004, is the map is rarely the data that some map data provider gave you in, as like one package. When I started, you'd, you'd go to one of a couple companies, you'd license map data, you'd put that into your map, and that would be it. But if you think about the apps now, the apps are really interesting and rich because of the data gets added onto that. So that ability to take a base map, which I realize is a vague word, but attach data to it is, is not just, I mean, important, it's like critical. It's the way people are building the type of apps that are there. So those are kind of the things that when we're thinking about developers, we're thinking about what, um, what needs to be in this open data package. And so as we thought about it, and by the way, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm at Overture now, uh, but before this, I was at Meta, and Meta was one of the founding companies. And so in some ways, I've been working for Overture for about six months, but in other ways, I've been working on it for about two years. So I'll give you a little bit of the background in terms of what was the thinking that brought it forward. But as we've looked at Overture, we've really thought about three main things that we're trying to do here. <coughs> one is, um, if open, day, open map data is going to be successful, open map data needs to allow developers to build uh, map applications that compete with the best in class. And that means from a map developer standpoint, one of the things we, do, we need to do in open data is use all forms of open data. Now, this community is really great at building community data, has been great at that for years, has built an amazing map. Um, but there are other forms of, of open data that are coming on the market. There's government data, which is starting to explode. The impact of AI is going to have a huge impact on creation of data. And so from a developer standpoint, what we want to do for developers is, is access and combine the best uh, forms of open map data we can find, because that is where um, their, their products are going to come from. Second thing is, is um, that needs to be through quality and deduplication. No surprise there. Uh, one of the experiences um, you know, that I had just before this is working at Meta. We worked with a number of companies to put together a product called Daylight, which was essentially taking OpenStreetMap and putting it through a number of quality checks. And those quality checks are very important for developers who want that product to be to work well. And then the one that I know is a hot uh, topic in OSM is developers want the data to come out in a schema that they know that's stable, that's consistent, they can build to. And, and as, as Mike Carroll said, there, sometimes there's a great schema for building maps and there's a different schema for using maps. And that's one of the things that we'd seen uh, in the developer community. And the second thing is linkability. And we, we have this thing called GERS, which goes to show we don't have marketing people in, uh, in, in Overture, but it's, it's essentially a, a, a set of identifiers in the map which allow you to link data to it. And that gets to the point I made about um, about the need to link other forms of data onto the map. And so those are kind of the three things that we're looking at. There's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on uh, in between that um, and, and uh, that we're working on. Um, so right now what we're doing, um, we've, we've been at it. We've started putting data out. Uh, newsflash, there'll be another data release next week. Um, we start putting data and we build them in these themes, um, which are basically uh, the themes, and I'll just kind of go through just because it gives you a sense of what the data is. So the first one is a transportation layer. So that's the road networks. We would expand it to transit. That is built on OSM data. Um, but, but we take OSM data, and actually there's a very good blog post that TomTom Tom wrote. We cross-posted it where we talk about what we do to that data to make it more uniform, to make it more consistent, to put it in the overture schema, and then to add a linear referencing system. So all those things are things that make it more consumable for a developer, but it is based on OpenStreetMap. Um, we have a places database, and a couple of releases ago, we released about 60 million places. 
Um, it is a big, messy list, I will say right now. Um, but that is a places database, and our goal there is to build a, a very good list of all the places. It's not rich. It doesn't have a lot of stuff attached to it. But we want to build that out uh, and have thoughts about it. Interestingly, transportation layers based on OSM. It is ODBL licensed. The places data is based on non-OSM data, and it is licensed under the CDLA. And we'll have time for questions. I'm happy to talk about that. Um, buildings is a combination. We use OSM data, we use community data from Esri, we use Microsoft data. You may see other data coming in from, from other open sources on that, but we want to build a big um, database of buildings out there. Admin boundaries, uh, we actually started with a different data set. The last version we flipped over to OSM. Um, and then we have something called base, which is like a context layer, and that's based on the OSM daylight version and has primarily land cover. And we're gonna do addresses. Um, it, everyone keeps coming and saying, you know you need addresses in a map. And it's like, yeah, I know that. Uh, I need engineers to build it. And, and so we're, we're uh, starting that out. So that's kind of where we are. Every one of those layers comes in an overture schema. So we're trying to build a consistent schema and everyone will have a, an identification on it that allows you to, to attach data to it. So that's kind of what we're doing. Um, so let me just kind of, go to the question that I get a lot is, is this competitive with OSM? So here, I'm happy to talk about that. Here is the framing I think about it in, if, if this is helpful for you. Um, for there to be competition, there has to be scarcity. If there's no scarcity, there's no reason for competition. We don't compete for air because there's plenty of air and we're all breathing it. You compete where there is scarcity. So if there's competition between OpenStreetMap and Overture, the question I would ask is, what is the scarcity we're competing over? And the things I, I would say is, there's no scarcity of data to be mapped. There's plenty of data to be mapped. Um, you know, us combined do not make a dent in that. So I don't think that's it. I don't think there's scarcity in people and resources to map. The resources that this community uses to crowdsource a map are fairly significantly different from the resources that we use to do other things and combine other data sets to the map. So I don't think there's scarcity on that. Um, financing is an interesting one. So you may disagree with me, but I would argue that there's no scarcity of financing in this. Uh, Roland's gonna talk next, he can disagree with me. Um, but I would say that the financing that Overture had is different from the financing that, um, that OpenStreetMap gets. And, and I don't think that the financing of Overture competes with uh, OpenStreetMap for financing. You may disagree. If you'd like to disagree, let's talk afterwards. We can meet out in the lobby by the screens where they have the sponsors of this event, many of which overlap. Um, so we may disagree. And so if we're not competing on those things, what are we competing on? And so I'm happy to talk about that. And I know that's been a subject of conversation. Um, but let's talk about it on, on those terms. If we're not competing, then I think the question really is, what is the, what is the role and what is the area for collaboration? And, and the thing that I have always felt um, is, is the goal here is to build more open data and have that data be high quality and have that data be used. And I think that's a place where everyone's in pretty violent agreement is, is um, it is a big, big challenge. And every time I, I think it's not, I look at new products that are coming out and think about the data implications of it, and the amount of data and the need for data just goes nowhere but up. And I've been in the industry for a while, and, and one of the things, you know, that I, as I got into the industry, I thought is like, at some point, maps are interesting, and at some point, they get kind of boring because it's done, right? It's we've mapped everything. And in, in my time in the mapping business, that has never been true. That has never been true that the map data has gotten good enough and as I look forward 10 years from now and I look at what developers are doing, I don't think it's gonna be true for the next 10 years. I think the amount of stuff to be mapped, the, the timeliness of it, how recent it is, the demands for accuracy and the demands for precision, the demands for attribution, in, in cases that range from local discovery, in cases that range for analysis, in cases that range for transportation or mobility or navigation or going forward into, the you know, augmented reality or going forward into autonomous driving, I see nothing but growth in the need for better and better data. And, and I mean, like when I look at it, I keep thinking this market's gonna flatten, it's gonna be good enough, and I've never seen it in 20 years. And I don't think you're gonna see it in the next 10. And beyond that, 
is way out of my horizon. So I think the thing that, that between the two organizations we ought to look at is what is the areas for collaboration in this? Because I think we both have the goal of building open map data and having that open map data used uh, uh, widely. So, uh, so that's the part I'd say. Um, then in terms of like, well, what would that look like? What would, what would collaboration actually look like? And, and uh, I think Ilya asked over here about uh, yesterday morning about the, the role for collaboration. Um, I, I won't, <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I mean, I think that, uh, I think there are a lot of areas for collaboration. At this point, I will, I will say, I think they're fairly hypothetical. We haven't done a lot of it yet. But the other part I would say is, is Overture hasn't, you know, I look at this organization, this organization has been around for 18 and a half years or something. It is remarkable how much this organization has done in that. We're at the very beginning of that journey. And so if you look at the things we've done so far, most of those things have been putting together the data, getting it out, getting the product out, getting the teams working together on it, developing a cadence, starting to come up with formats and schemas and GERs, but we haven't really put out data. None of our data yet has been production. We haven't come out on a, a regular cadence, so that's about to change. Um, and so we haven't done a lot. So the areas for collaboration have been fairly limited, but it's not for lack of intent to collaborate. I think the question I would ask this community is where do you want to collaborate? Um, or where, 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 where are good places to collaborate? For instance, we can develop, um, let me just give a couple ideas here. I think one of the big things that really, uh, you know, I, I was listening to uh, a presentation from a couple of years ago. Um, I think one of the great things about the two organizations, and, and I think one of the real strengths of OpenStreetMap has then been OpenStreetMap's like relentless dedication to map the stuff that the mappers want to map. It's, there, there is very little interest in saying, I need better maps here, better maps there. The beauty of this community has really been in mapping the things that the community wants to build. And that's a very different perspective from map developers who usually want very specific things mapped. They want things mapped. And so I think between those two, you have different perspectives that eventually makes for a much richer map. And, and you know, as, as many people who've been in this room for a long time will know, things that don't have a use or a utility at one point, once they get mapped, sometimes become useful and, be, and develop utility. So that that, that uh, change, difference in perspective, uh, I think is important and important to, uh, to respect. Um, the other thing uh, that, that I would submit is, I would submit today the best maps in the world are the maps that are used the most. And when I got into this, the best maps in the world were the maps that were surveyed the most, right? You and I'd get in a car, I'd drive, you'd have a computer, we drive around, you'd type, I'd drive, and we'd, we'd survey the world. And that's the way, that, and the best maps were the ones where you and I could get back to that intersection or back to that thing more frequently. And so the best maps were the most surveyed. One of the things that we're seeing now is the best maps in the world are the ones that are used the most if they can provide a feedback loop to get that information. And, and you know, since we all started carrying these things in our pocket, we can not only use the map, we can communicate data back. And that I think has been a fundamental change in mapping. And I think what it implies is the maps that are used the most get the most feedback. If that feedback is incorporated, the maps stay up to date. So, so I think one of the things that I hope Overture can do is really expand the usage, the number of open maps that are in, in more people's, in more applications, in more phones, in more people's pockets. If we can improve that and build feedback loops, we can, we can really build a tremendous amount of data. That leads to a third thing, which is, I think that Overture can create new sources of open data. Um, a number of our companies, you know, there were some questions the other day about LLMs, and, and you know, we've, a number of our companies have obviously done a lot of work in computer vision and things like that. I think some, one of the strengths is there's a lot of technical capability that can create new data or, or make new data or old data open. Um, I, think that's an, I think that's an asset to OpenStreetMap, but I think that's something the community is really gonna have to decide is what do you wanna do with those forms of data? What, how do you want to incorporate them or not incorporate them into OpenStreetMap? You know, we just put out a bunch of places data. I will admit, you don't wanna put all those places into your OpenStreetMap. But some of them you might, but do you want to do that? And how can we collaborate on that? And, and do you want to? 
I don't presume that I know the answer to that. And that's really what I'm looking to the community for from OpenStreetMap is how do you want to incorporate or do you or don't you? Maybe you don't. And, and it's no one's intent to force that, uh, that, that information into, um, uh, into OpenStreetMap. Um, one thing I would say is, and, and just to like be super clear on it, Overture has zero intent in building a community of, of, of mappers. I mean, we have zero intent. That's not our intent. And when people call me and say, hey, I have this data, or I see this thing that changed, like in the transportation, what we would call the transportation layer, my response is go fix it in OpenStreetMap. And, um, and, and, you know, just so you know, we have no intent of doing anything there. And frankly, we, it's a great asset for us because oh, this community is doing such a good job of it right now. Um, we do intend to build a lot of uh, things on data validation QA. Again, something that we can offer to the community, um, but I think that's one of the things we're looking to the OSM community to tell us how do you want to, um, to deal with that and use it. And, and the last one that I think is uh, somewhat half-baked, but, um, but you know, I think is an interesting area is tooling is an interesting area for us. Obviously, if you build data, um, just to be clear, um, right now, our objective is to be a data company. We are building, or not, I'm sorry, a data organization. We are building data. Um, we are not building software. We're not building routing engines. We're not being ren rendering engines. Um, but at the same time, you know, data, you can't just build it and stick it on the shelf. Um, data has to be used, it has to be visualized. And so there obviously is tooling that's needed to, uh, you know, to help developers uh, evaluate and adopt the data. And that's another area, I think. I think OpenStreetMap has over time built a tremendous amount of really interesting data. And is there room to mutually support um, areas for data? And then the last one is just a bunch of dots because honestly, we're at the very early stages of this. Don't know all the answers. Um, but I guess a piece I would want to say is, is we are open to collaboration on it. We, we are interested, if, if you hear silence, it's usually because there aren't many of us. Um, and uh, and uh, sometimes he's not as good at answering his emails as he should be, um, but but that is the intent. Um, so uh, I've got some time for questions, um, but but again, I think hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of where we are, and uh, would be very happy to answer questions. There are some people in the room, and if you ask really tough questions, I'll uh, point them those questions to them. Yeah, Roland. Well, Thank you for the talk. Just about the start of one thing that I think is dark. <laughs> By the way, it looks really funny when people talk into this cube. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for the talk. Um, one point of C strategy is it's still around. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the talk. Uh, one thing where I think we see scarcity is the attention of the general public. We believe that in principle everyone should know that if they have to fix data, they will, should go to OpenStreetMap. So we have a large pain point about attribution. So if we detect that one of your data users um, violates the attribution re um, requirement, um, what would you do if we approach you about that to help them co and get in contact? Okay, so the... the uh yeah, so it's uh, so a good question. So as, as you go through our data stack, there are some, uh, you know, we obviously have a mix of licenses in there, but primarily there are two. There's, there's ODDL and CDLA. And, you know, our intent and the thing uh, that we're trying to do is be very clear on what license attaches to what and the license requirements are to that. And so, um, you know, our, our intent is fully to comply with that. ODBL has a share alike uh, uh, clause, as you all know, it has a share-like clause and an attribution clause. Those are there. Keep in mind, we're, we're making data. We're not making a map. And so, um, we, but we will attribute. Right now, we attribute in every release note um, and, and we'll do it. And I think, you know, to the extent we, pa we pass that through, so anyone using Overture data is bound by the license conditions of the data they use. Um, I don't, I, I think, you know, I know where you're going on the attribution one. I don't know that I'm going to have more success than you will getting what you want on that. Um, but, you know, the license is a license. It is there. It has, it has, it has the terms that are there. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Have you got a mic that works? I don't know. Just a moment. Yep. It should work. And this one, yep. Oh, this one works. Yep. Hi, Mark. <laughs> uh, really great talk. I can really see the ambition behind Overture and that basically it is 
better OpenStreetMap without the unmanageable community, but with corporations. So I can see why companies like TomTom, Esri, Microsoft, Meta, Fox, Overture, because it is really easy to sell. And you started your talk with uh, like the main like audience is developers. Uh, kind of yes, but you remember when Bal Balmer went to stage shouting developers? Did he like want developers? I doubt that he wanted code. If he could like ask AI write me Windows 11, <laughs> developers would be psyched. So, uh, and the thing is, author is I feel like the target audience of our Overture are like consumers, companies, management, because it's really easy to sell. It's harder to sell to developers. So, and we come back to OpenStreetMap. Like, I think the community's problem with Overture is that uh, it will be the case like with open source and Amazon and stuff like that. Like, uh, people were working hard on uh, making Postgres, on MongoDB, on Nginx, and then like Amazon comes and like forks it inside their own, uh, pour their infinite resources on improving the tools. And now like open source community is left with like nothing. Amazon gives money. Uh, and with Overture, like uh, there isn't a scarcity. You're correct. Like uh, there are many developers, there are many finances, kind of like that. But uh, like Overture, it feels treats OpenStreetMap like this some mag magic infinite thing underneath. Like what do you want? Like do this. So. Uh, and the problem is like Overture, like in five years, when it will be super popular, have finalized the layers, finalized the girls, like developers will start using it. And it will everywhere be like with map box a few years ago, like maps from Overture, money go and resources go to Overture. And opposite map is just some magic sources that gets nothing from it. So the question is how do you plan to support like opposite map that much of overture is based upon besides just encouraging go map more okay there are there are a number of things there um let, let me take a few of them and, and and Ilya, come back at me if i if i didn't get your most important ones um so so one of the things is, i think you said was uh, overture was a response to like don't want to deal with that community actually i would i would push back on that i think that and, you know, look, I've been involved in this community from a different angle from many of you, from like a corporate being in here trying to think how to use it. I think at some level, Overture is an acknowledgement that this community wants to be a certain thing and actually has a very clearly defined identity. I don't think if I had come up here and said, uh, like a year ago in Florence, if I had got given a presentation said, hi, I'm Mark, I'm from Facebook, here's what I need you to do for me. I don't think that would have gotten a good reception at the state of the map. You agree, right? And so at some level, I think that um, Overture is based on the acknowledgement that OpenStreetMap is a very specific thing that this community has defined very specifically. And it's a community of local mappers. It puts high emphasis on local knowledge. It's very strong on building a community, building a diverse community and all that. I think that is a unique thing. I mean, I think that is a unique thing. And actually, I think it would be, I came to the conclusion after years of kind of looking at it the other way, that actually is a mistake for companies to try and change this organization. At the same time, uh, companies and developers need other things. And that's, I think, one of the pieces that we looked at is there are other things that people need. And I don't think, and I think, you know, that's a lot of what drove uh, the creation of Overture. Um, in terms of supporting it, you know, look, I, I think there are a lot of ways we can support it. I think as, as it developed, I mean, I listed some of them. Um, I'm not, I'm not on the board. I'm not going to drive the thing. But I think the strength of OpenStreetMap is actually pretty unique. And I don't think anything Overture does changes that unique strength. And I think, you know, if I were advising someone, I would say double down on the unique strength that you have, because that is a, a hugely valuable thing. My hope is that we can take that and, and you know, increase the usage of it. So I don't know if that exactly answers all your questions, but I mean, that's, that's how I would see it. 
<clears throat> Paul. So across multiple organizations, I've heard the sentiment expressed that if we have Overture, we don't need OSM. I think this is wrong, but um, it is something that I've heard from multiple people in multiple orgs. How can Overture combat, combat this view from spreading? So if I worried what everyone said, I, I'd, I'd go crazy. Um, what I would say, and you know, I've, I've talked about it quite a bit, I mean, I, my full intent is to give OSM credit for the, the base that's in there and where, you know, where it plays. I mean, um, you know, I think one of the things is I can't control what people say, I think. Um, but I think, you know, if, if, you know, my perspective is the message I've given publicly and the message I just gave today, I don't think I'm giving you a special message. I think that's what I've said publicly. And, you know, I hope that I, I can give it credit. But, but like I say, you know, information is a, a dangerous thing, so. Simon. Uh, okay, this is horrible, but. Um, <laughs> you look very I, funny. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. But I'm used to making a fool of myself, so. Uh, I, I have a slightly different take on this. Really? Um, big surprise, huh? Uh, I see OpenStreetMap not just as the core data collection, collaborative data collection or, uh, project and movement. I see it more as a big ecosystem, which includes what we do here, the mapping, but has always included the commercial ecosystem around this, all the small and medium-sized companies that have done what Overture is doing, aggregating data, normalizing it, providing service on top. You've worked for two of those companies, and those are the ones that are going to be disrupted most by Overture, because that's where uh, you're fitting in into this ecosystem. I'd like to hear your take on what does that mean, say, for Stadia Maps or other companies, because you're taking away a lot of what their value added to OpenStreetMap raw data is. Um, yeah, so, so a couple different things there. Or let, me, let me hit two pieces there. Um, so I, one of the things... Um, you know, Ilya made another comment that it's easy to sell. I'm going like, oh yeah, wait, wait till, you know. Um, but, but conceptually, actually, there's a lot of adoption around um, the idea of Overture. And, and, you know, I've been talking to people either about Overture directly or about the concept of Overture for about two years. Um, and there is a lot of commonality. And I think the reason is because all these companies are doing the same thing. I mean, to your point, like once I was describing Overture and it, all of a sudden it came in my head that like, we're not doing anything different. All these companies have been doing this, right? They've all been formatting the data. They've all been doing their QA checks. They've all been doing their stuff. What we're doing is saying, let's just do that once. And, and, and so I think most of the companies and, and look, it, ecosystems are big and varied and not everyone's super, you know, that will disrupt some people, but most people are very happy to have that done for them. Um, uh, but but I, I'm, I'm sure we could go into detail on case by case. The other thing I would say is, I think you're right. There has been an ecosystem. I think they're right, but, but companies have been doing this type of thing for a long time. And one of the things I think I made in my first point is, you look at some of the companies that interface with OpenStreetMap, Almost all of them have big data teams or map data teams. Most map developers do not have map data teams. They do not have people who know how to use map data. No, they don't know how to use map data. They don't know how to work with map data and they don't want to. So no. anyway, we, we could probably, uh, this, how am I on time? Yeah. Well, I'm over time, sorry, Ro. Okay, we're over time, so. Yeah. Are we done? Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate the attention.